In this video, we're going to look at the vertebral column and some of the corresponding spinal nerves, some other neural structures. Here you can see five lumbar vertebrae, the intervertebral discs. And if we turn this laterally, you can see the spinal nerve sets that come out between the vertebrae at the intervertebral foramina. Turn this a little further to the posterior, you can see they've removed the posterior of the sacrum, so you can see the cauda equina, which is running through the sacral canal. You can also see the corresponding sacral spinal nerves going through the sacral foramina. Again, if we turn this around to the anterior, you can see where those come through and form this sacral plexus. On the side here, you can see some of these adjoining spinal nerves forming the lumbar plexus. And finally, back to the cauda equina, we have that central filament that came all the way down, forms this filum terminale comes off the conus medullaris, which is the tip of the spinal cord proper we identified in an earlier video. If you look at this full vertebral model, and we're counting spinal nerves, remember the rule about how the nerves are named. They're named based on the vertebrae that they correspond with. But in the cervical region, the first eight cervical spinal nerves here are named for the vertebrae below them. And that's because this first cervical spinal nerve comes out below the foramen magnum and above C1, the atlas. So if we're looking at this, we have cervical spinal nerve 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Though you only have seven cervical vertebrae, this eighth cervical spinal nerve is a transitional nerve. After that, we're into the thoracic spinal nerves. These now are named for the vertebrae above them. So your 12th thoracic, your 5 lumbar, they're all named for the vertebrae above them. Now, if you're taking an exam, and you have to count, and they're asking you to identify this nerve, well then it's going to make sense to start at the top. And you get there quickly, because your time is limited during an exam. But if you're down here, it would make sense to start at the bottom, because you could just count backwards. Lumbar 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Thoracic 12, 11, 10. Since these are named for the vertebrae above them, this would be the 10th thoracic spinal nerve, or 10th set. Finally, if you look at these intervertebral discs, these are those fibrocartilaginous pads, that maintain spacing and allow some flexion of the spinal cord. This bulging one, it's red, is more than just bulging, it's representing a herniated disc. And if this fully breaches, then the nucleus pulposus would leak out. It's pretty hostile to nerve roots, so it might shut down their function. And ultimately, this disc would degenerate and collapse, which would cause this intervertebral foramina to become pinched or somewhat stenotic. And that's going to affect any nerve function downstream of that insult. So anything downstream of this nerve would be affected, maybe a loss of sensation or function.